One of the most popular and perhaps compelling solutions to the Fermi paradox is that intelligent life is simply incredibly rare in the universe, and that's why we see no definitive evidence of it. A variant of this thinking, however, is that while intelligence may be rare right now, it may eventually become very common and a veritable explosion of intelligent life might come to be in the universe's future. This can happen in two ways, but before we get into that, it's worth noting that there could be two completely separate paths for life in the universe. The first is Earth, where a terrestrial planet with surface liquid water gives rise to life and the possibility of the eventual evolution of intelligent life on it. The other is more tricky, since while we know they exist, and we can speculate about their chances for harboring life, we don't yet know if they actually do. These are the ice shell moons, such as Europa. What we know even less about are the conditions and evolutionary possibilities on worlds with oceans locked under ice. Might they only be able to produce microbes, or could something more complex evolve? It's an open question, but what doesn't seem likely about ice shell worlds is that they could ever develop intelligent species. How does one master fire in an ocean environment? How does one build advanced technology and so on? Would such a landless environment ever favor the rise of intelligence at all? It could be that primitive life abounds on worlds like Enceladus and Europa throughout the universe, but never produce civilizations. But with terrestrial planets like Earth, we ourselves prove that it can happen. But how common are worlds like Earth? We don't know yet, but one line of thinking is that they aren't very common at all. Our Sun, for example, isn't the most common type of star in the Milky Way. It's significantly beat out by the red and orange dwarfs. How common are Earth-like worlds within the habitable zones of Sun-like stars? We don't yet know, but there is no guarantee that they would be common. And even then, would they host the right mix for intelligent life to arise? Just the right amount of land and water, plate tectonics, a sufficiently well-sized and placed moon, all of these things may have played major roles in the process that led to us. This is usually termed the rare earth hypothesis, and that the reason we don't see evidence of alien civilizations is because earth is rare. And even then, what may be yet rarer is the development of intelligence on an earth-like planet. Earth had hosted life for billions of years before humans and our hominid relatives ever came on the scene, and had the conditions for their evolution not happened to have been just so, then Earth would still be a planet full of reptiles, mammals, and complex life, but nothing capable of ever creating a technological civilization. Perhaps most Earth-like planets, rare as they might be, simply remain dumb and we are on the galaxy's lottery winner, where everything came together just so. But what of the future? Might other environments around red dwarfs become better able to host life in the future? Might that lead to an eventual explosion of life in the galaxy? Might that, in turn, lead to an eventual explosion of intelligence? Just such an idea was advanced by Abraham Loeb and colleagues linked to their paper below. Essentially, since small type M red dwarfs are far, far more plentiful than any other kinds of stars, and they live extremely long lives but early on are too active for life to get much of a foothold, it may be the case that later in their lives that equation changes. And there are also the type K orange dwarf stars, which may offer the best chances of all stars for Earth-like life, but may not have had enough time for intelligence to arise. In short, this solution to the Fermi paradox would simply mean that, yes, we are alone as far as we are likely to know regarding intelligent alien life, but not forever. And even if there never is an explosion of intelligence in the Milky Way, there is at least us. Should we survive and colonize the galaxy, the great distances and communications times involved would favor that our colonies might become isolated. After enough time has passed, those colonies that might have started out as human might end up something very alien to each other indeed. Thanks for listening, I am science fiction author and futurist John Michael Godier, currently dubious about aliens smarter than we are. Maybe there are planets even better at hosting intelligence than Earth is, and they look on our planet as a habitable but otherwise dumb exoplanet. The more I do this channel, the more I find myself pondering alien civilization suspiciously. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live. One of the most vexing and profound open questions within science is what is the process of abiogenesis? The emergence of life from non-living organic chemistry. It remains very much unclear.